Hi there, Ash from Numisma here. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you how you can manage your business more efficiently using Numisma. Now, you may be watching this video due to the fact that you are a, a client of an accountant or a bookkeeper, or you may use Numisma directly as a business owner. But really what we want to help you get out of today's session is how you can manage your business more efficiently by using Nemisma. Um, for anyone that doesn't know already, Nemisma is a cloud-based accounting software, and we empower accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners to work more collaboratively because we recognize that businesses that have a useful and, and good advisor working with them um, are normally much more successful than ones that don't have. Uh, so before well, without any further ado, let's get started. So how you can manage your business more efficiently using the MISMA. And in today's session, we'll be covering how to raise sales invoices, um, how to request and receive payments of up to £250,000, absolutely fee-free, um, how to set up bank feeds, how to use the MISMA's mobile app, how to snap pictures of receipts on the go using the MISMAS mobile app and how to generate useful financial reports within a few clicks. Uh, there will also be other areas of NEMISMA that we cover throughout the session, uh, but that's the main um, areas. So switching to NEMISMA, the screen you can see now is the main NEMISMA dashboard. And this is the first page you will see every time you log into NEMISMA. Uh, so at the top, you've got some KPIs in relation to your bank transactions, your pending receipts, your unallocated sales. So these are any payments that have been received into your bank or by cash that need to be allocated against sales invoices and your unallocated purchases. You can get an overview of your sales grouped by month. So you can roughly see how your month for month performance has done. Uh, and you can do exactly the same for your bank accounts to see how much cash you have in the bank. Um, you can see the last time your bank was reconciled. And for anyone that doesn't know, uh, reconciled is essentially uh, a term used by accountants and bookkeepers to say uh, match, match transactions. So when was the last time your bank statement was matched to a software? So to give you a bit of a, an idea, uh, traditionally, uh, accountants and bookkeepers would get your PDF or um, printed bank statement, and then they would go through, tick the bank statement back to a piece of software or going even further back, a set of books, um, just confirming that they've they've performed um, or they've book kept every single transaction from your bank statement. And um, they would tick the bank statement just to confirm that it is in the records so we keep track of that via software um just to confirm that all of the bank transactions have been processed and that your your bank in the misma matches to your actual bank account and you can switch between all of your different banks here as well uh, in the bottom right you actually have got the ability to view a quick snapshot of reports of your balance sheet and your profit and loss uh, which we'll be talking about later and then we've got direct to balances as well. And then in the bottom left, if you are working with an accountant or bookkeeper, then you will be able to see your upcoming deadlines. So when your accounts are due and, and how many days they're due in, uh, when your corporation tax is due, and as well as how much is to um, be paid to HMRC, your VAT returns and self-assessments. Yeah, so you can just keep on top of your own deadlines by using that section there. Okay, um, so moving on to the sales section of Nemisma, um, by going to the dashboard, you can quickly see all of your sales invoices, who the sales invoices were raised to, how much the net amount was, the VAT amount if you are that registered, and the amount that's due to be paid. So you can, if you are using the MISMA correctly, you can quickly see how much money is owing to the company. Um, and you can view the invoices as well from this section. Uh, and you'll notice there's a pay now button and that's the feature that you can use to request and receive up to 250,000 pounds, absolutely free, fee free. I'll come to it shortly. 
uh, but it's in relation to our true layer integration, which uses open banking technology. Now, on this page, you can download this uh, invoice as a PDF or an Excel or Word, but you can also print it. Uh, in addition to being able to view them, you can also email them to your customers. So one of the beauties with Nomisma being cloud-based, we actually allow, allow you to integrate your email provider into the system so that any email you send will be sent from your own email address. And again, that's all about saving a little bit of time. So you don't have to go to Gmail or Office 365 or Outlook. Just press send. The email template will come up, certain figures will be populated, and then you can send it. In addition to that, you can even customize this email template completely so you can make it your own. You don't have to use the standard one. Um, and then we can edit that transaction or delete it if it doesn't or if it shouldn't exist. Okay. Uh, there is also a chase payment option, and that's what you can use with where it's got a slightly different email template. And again, you can customize that template in the settings. And then finally, you can also mark it as received payment. So if it hasn't been paid into, um, if, if it has been paid, you can mark it as paid by using this functionality. Okay, so if I go ahead and just mark that as paid in full and save, then that invoice is now marked as paid. So you can keep on, on top of who owes you money, how much is owed. You can even do partial payments. So if they only paid 5,000 pounds of that 10,000 balance, you can mark that as paid in half as well. And then you can, you can add more payments later. Okay. Um, so in order to raise a new invoice, you've got a few different options. Um, one great option you have is the ability to copy an invoice. So you can select copy here. And then what that will do is pull through all of the transactions from the original, sorry, all of the details from the original transaction and then allow you to update them. So you can make it your own. You can change the invoice number, the income type, the description, unit prices. You can add a new line. You can customize it completely, but it gives you a starting point. Um, so you don't have to completely start from scratch every single time. Okay. Uh, in addition to being able to copy, you can also go up to new and you can create a brand new invoice from scratch. Um, so just to cover a few fields on this page, uh, you can select your customer and you can add new customers. Uh, you've got your invoice date, your due date, invoice number, your bank account, which you can select, which is the bank account that you would like to be paid to. And if your bank isn't listed here and you haven't added it yet, you can quickly add a new one. Uh, you've also got your currency. If you have multi-currency selected, you would be able to select um, other currencies, but it is mainly driven by supplier. So here we've got, sorry, customer or supplier. So here we've got Tesco's, which is USD, and it's changed the currency to USD. And as you can see, all of the other um, fields are all changed to USD as well. And one of the beauties with this is that we've actually built all of the exchange rates into the system and we connect to uh, a global database in order to get that and they get pulled through. However, if you wanted to, you can override them. Yeah, but we do get accurate exchange rates. So I would recommend not overriding. Okay. Um, and then we can, if we change that back to Homer, so here we can go through, enter all of the transactions. Uh, so we've got our income types. This is how you want to categorize your income within your books. Uh, so you can add new income types if you want and name them absolutely anything you like. You've also got the ability to enter a description that will appear on your sales invoice. Uh, let's go through and add one. You can enter a unit price. So what is the cost per unit? It also may, may be um, the cost per hour if you are a service-based uh, business and how many quantities. And then if you are VAT registered, you can select your VAT rate, but if not, it would just default to no VAT for you. Okay, and then you've got deductions. So here you can add as many different categories as you like, but uh, if you want 
or if there's a deduction on the invoice, you can add uh, an amount in here. So we could say two, 100 pounds, and then that will reduce the invoice value by 100 pounds. Okay. Uh, and then you've also got the ability to select a department and you can add new departments. So with departments, they're really useful. It's not just purely for different departments in your business. It could be any way that you want to segment your reporting. So different locations, different stores, um, whatever you would like to do in order to um, segment your reporting. Uh, but that's really useful because if you start using departments or locations, when you go to reports, you will be able to generate departmental reports and you'll be able to see your profit and loss based on each of the individual um, segments that you create. Uh, yeah, so restaurant one, uh, we can send a chaser email that would send an automatic chaser email on the due date of the invoice. Um, our invoice template, any additional notes, and you can even add an attachment as well if you wanted to. So we'll just save that. And then at that point, we'll get a preview of what the invoice will look like. And then we'll save that again. So it's the Homer invoice 370. Great. And then we can see the amount due and we can view that at any time. Yeah, so now there is a pay now button. Uh, let's see if I can test the experience and show you exactly how it works. Um, so essentially what will happen is you will send this to your customer and they'll receive the invoice and they'll see that it says pay now on it. And they'll be able to simply click that pay now button, whether it's on a, a web browser or a mobile device, and they'll be taken to this screen where they can select the bank account that they would like to pay from. So in this case, we can select Monzo and select that bank. That will then load the native um, Monzo experience and it will process that payment. Uh, I've already done this before, so it's showing me successful and I'm on a test account. However, it will take them to the Monzo bank account. Uh, the Monzo bank will then be pre-populated with all of the uh, payment details. So the amount, the invoice number, the bank details, and all they'll need to do is verify their login details by uh, fingerprint or however they use to, whatever method they use to log into the bank. Um, and then once they do that, the payment will be sent instantly via BAX and you should receive it into your bank. But also Namisma will be updated to show that a payment has been made. So uh, there is a time delay on this. So it may take a minute or two. But the invoice will be marked as paid um, and the amount of payment will go into cash in transit to show that it's coming into the bank account. Yeah, and that is free to use. So there's no there's no fee. To, to use that functionality. Um, so in addition to raising single invoices, you've also got the ability to raise repeat invoices. So these repeat invoices will allow you to raise them weekly, monthly, um, whatever frequency you like. Um, but it's exactly the same as the one-off invoices, but they just repeat for you automatically. Um, so weekly, two weeks, four weeks, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Um, so Instead of entering the same invoice 52 times a year, if you know exactly the same invoice needs to be sent, you can set this up to send your client a weekly invoice um, and you can turn on auto email so that it will also email uh, the invoice using your template to your client. Yeah, so you can enter your customer, your start date, your end date, income type description, just like the normal invoice. Um, if you want, custom descriptions you can use our tagging system so that it will pull through the month that the invoice relates to the year the day the date from date to can all be added in as uh, line items uh, and then at the bottom here you can select the bank account you'd like to be paid to your payment terms uh, your number of days that the invoice should be due in so when it's raised how many days into the future should it be due uh, and it will do the total occurrences for you as well. So if you enter the number of th the date, I'm not gonna go through and do this because of the dummy data, but uh, the, the 
total occurrences you'll be able to select based on uh, frequency. And then on the right hand side, you put auto email, like I said, you can mark if it's a non bat invoice. And uh, you can also select it to auto process if you want it to um, just process automatically without you having to approve it. Okay. Uh, and then in addition to repeat invoices, you've also got the option of entering a batch entry, um, new credit notes, VAT only invoices, new quotes, and new jobs. So jobs is uh, an, an additional reporting um, segment like departments. So you've got departments, which is one level, and you can also have jobs. You can run them side by side, um, which is, again, really quite useful if you want to um, do more detailed reporting on a job by job basis. Um, with the quotes, you can actually create quotes, just like an invoice. And then once that quote is created, you'll have a separate dashboard where you can go to to view quotes. And at this point, you would then be able to convert them to invoices once they're accepted. OK, and then uh, we've also got our customer list. And one that's really well, well, one feature that we've got that's really, really useful for any cash based businesses is this taking sheet. So right now, if you are a cash taking uh, or a cash based business, a restaurant um, or anything else, as a matter of fact, you can select our taking sheet option and you would be able to process taking sheets within the MISMA. Um, so I know from my experience, most businesses would be doing this manually at the moment in a cash taking book. Um, but this will allow you to enter everything into the system and make it more systemized, meaning you can quickly make amendments and adjustments if needs be but also this meets uh, the VAT MTD requirements for daily reporting and it will include it on the VAT return accordingly so all of the sales codes and categories will have their own VAT rates and um, you can customize this uh, to suit your business and you can add as many different payment types as you like and as many different sales categories as you like um, if you are using this, I highly recommend speaking to your uh, accountant or bookkeeper if you have one, um, because they will definitely be able to help you get this up and running. Okay, um, but going back, so we actually have a way of entering multiple taking sheets, not just one taking sheet across the whole business. So we've got sites here. So in addition to departments and jobs, you can add additional sites to report the taking sheets for each individual site, okay? Um, and then, oh, I just know it's getting dark, so bear with me. Hey Google, turn lights on. So that is the, the sales side of Numisma um, in terms of entering data into the platform. We've also got reports, so if you go to review reports, you can select your debtors report, your credit notes, um, and you can also see a more detailed credit note detail breakdown. Uh, but if we go to debtors report, this will be the most useful one for you because it will show you a breakdown of who owes you money and how, um, when is that money due? So is it due within zero to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days or older? Um, and you can see a breakdown of all of your customers, how much is unpaid, how many payments have been received or other transactions like credit notes haven't been processed yet. So what, what bookkeeping needs to be done and um, what is the total amount? So your unpaid plus your unreconciled equals your total amount. Uh, but from this page as well, you can go into a detailed view in order to see exactly all of your customers and a, and a breakdown of their uh, account. So you can see it on a transactional basis. Uh, but going back to the summary, you can actually drill down into your customers as well to generate statements. Yeah, and these statements can be generated as a PDF um, or a, an Excel document. And you can change the uh, from and to date, as well as the bank details that you would like your customer to pay to if you are sending this to them to ask them to pay the balance on account. Um, but 
yeah, as you can see, all of the transactions are listed here and then the bank details are at the bottom. Okay. So that is sales. Um, expenditure really is exactly the same. However, what we recommend doing is any business owner that's working with an accountant or bookkeeper, you can do this yourself. However, it's probably not worth your time doing this if you are running a business. So uh, an accountant or bookkeeper will do this a lot quicker for you because they're doing it for many of their clients. And as a result, we recommend raising your sales invoices, uh, taking pictures of receipts and uploading them to Namisma and setting up bank feeds. And by doing those three activities, you can really liaise and work with your accountant or bookkeeper to get your books um, produced in a timely manner, which will allow you to uh, begin getting on top of your business's finances and operating more efficiently and making better financial decisions. And as a result of that, you will no longer be running your business blindly because with this kind of data, you can see that you are profitable or you're not profitable or there's certain months you're profitable and there's other months where you should start um, reeling in the costs, reduce your overheads, reduce your members of staff in order to stay profitable. Without that level of financial detail, you're more, I, I, I wouldn't say you're guessing because you have a good idea about how your business is performing, but you can get a better idea if you if your finances are all in order and um, everything is done properly because an accountant or bookkeeper will help you to um, visualize your finances better, which I will show you in the reporting side of the MISMO exactly how um, they can help you. Uh, but with the expenditure, we've got the ability to enter new supplier bills and um, new subcontractor bills are specifically for anyone in the construction industry scheme. Uh, we've got supplier bill batches, new debit notes, and new VAT only bills. Um, similar to the sales process, where you can actually select uh, an old supply bill and copy it if you wanted to. So you can go through and it will be pre populated with all of the details of that supply bill. Um, but you can also go up and select new and enter a brand new one in. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we are also asked about remittance advices. So if your supplier contacts you and says, hey, have you made payment? You can turn around to them and say, yes, we have. It should be received any day now. But you can also send them a remittance advice telling them that you've made payment or showing them. So here, in this case, we can select that transaction, select remittance advice and preview it. You are also able to send that via email if you wanted to. Um, but then this would generate the invoice and it will show that the invoice um, total, the amount paid and how much is still owing. So it's a great way of just sending a document to your client to say, hey, look, this is directly from my bookkeeping. I've marked it as paid. It, you should receive it any day now. OK. Um, and then you've also got our process receipts and our unprocessed receipts. So you can go in here and see all of the receipts that have been processed. So these are your documents that are uploaded through our mobile app, or you can upload them directly into the MISMA itself. Uh, again, just like sales, we do also have reports. And the most useful report is our creditors report. And this shows you exactly who you owe money to and how much is owing and when it's owed. Yeah, so we've got unpaid, unreconciled amount, and then a breakdown. Uh, again, if you drill down into uh, <coughs> the supplier, you can see a breakdown of their account. Okay. Um, so within banking, this is where it, it really gets a little bit more interesting uh, because you can actually set up bank feeds. And with the bank feeds, what Namisma will do is go to your bank account every day and it will download all of the transactions directly into the Namisma platform. Now, it doesn't sound exciting. However, if you think about what you're currently doing, if you're not using bank feeds, you would either be downloading a PDF statement or a CSV file from your bank, manually uploading it maybe once a month. But what this will do is give you or your advisor the ability to process those transactions every single day.
and you would get uh, a real good insight into your business's finances, it, whatever frequency you like. So you can speak to your advisor about upping the frequency if you wanted to, doing more minute uh, transactional data on a daily basis rather than monthly. Um, th they would probably need to charge you a bit more for that, but it's worth a conversation. Uh, but within banking, you can go to new and set up new bank feed. And then what this would do is it will take you to TrueLayer, our third party su supplier, and it will then allow you to select the bank account that you use that you would like to connect to Namisma. So we do offer a wide range of different bank accounts. We've got uh, most of the high street banks, including uh, Barclays, HSB, Halifax, Lloyds, NatWest Nationwide. Um, we've also got Monzo, Revolut, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, <laughs> Allied or Irish Bank Corporate, Barclay Card. Um, there is also Tide. Starling um, and Revolut. So there's a wide range of banks and you, you can connect to all of these. Um, so once the transactions go into Namisma, then they would go in as unreconciled transactions. So they, they just need to be processed. Um, they need to have a nominal code, a VAT rate if needs be. Um, and there's several ways of processing them. Uh, before I move on to that, sorry, it should also be said, in addition to bank feeds, you do also have the ability to upload a CSV file full of bank transactions. Um, so you can do that here and you can upload them directly via uh, an Excel or CSV file. Uh, if you have a PDF statement, you can also upload a PDF in order to convert it to a CSV file. Um, and you can also add the transactions manually if you wanted to. However, I would not recommend this because it will be extremely time consuming. Okay, so if we go into unreconciled transactions and just change the start date because I know there's no transactions in 2022. So there's two transactions here. Uh, the first is demo sales and the second is Aweb Live Hotel. Uh, so there's a few ways of processing these. The first is manual. Uh, you can select your VAT rate manually and you can select the code that you would like to uh, reconcile it to. So we could go UK and overseas travel costs. Uh, the second way is actually suggestions, uh, sorry, suggestive. Um, so what I mean by that is Namisma has these green icons on the right-hand side. And if these transactions in the bank match to a sales invoice uh, or a supplier bill, then it will highlight that there's a potential match. So it will, by hovering over it, it will show you that the supplier name, the receipt number, the date, the gross amount. And if you decide that that's correct, you can select the green tick and then it will reckon, it will pull it to the correct nominal code and the correct VAT rate for you. And then from this process, from this point, you can select reconcile and it will mark that supplier bill or sales invoice as paid. Um, and then the third option you've got is to actually manually select which customer it relates to. Um, so this payment could relate to three or four different sales invoices. Um, so our suggestion, our suggestion wouldn't work because it doesn't exactly match with those four invoices. Now, from this point, what you can do is use our magnifying glass to then select the individual invoices that that transaction relates to. Uh, it will then total the bank transaction, total the selected invoice and show you a difference. Uh, you can still reconcile this if you wanted to, and it, it will just allocate the payment against the first invoice that was due, or you can reconcile with a journal entry and it will put the balance to a specific um, category in your accounts. So the balance being the difference here. Uh, so if I was to select discounts, it would then write off the balance of the sales invoices. It will process a payment of 2,500 to the 9,900 amount. And the 55,300 would be posted to discounts, but all sales invoices would be shown as uh, paid or marked as paid. Um, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. It's a little bit more technical uh, from a bookkeeping perspective. 
Uh, and then the fourth option you've got uh, is actually probably the most efficient way of doing this. And you can actually create bank rules. So if there's a transaction that appears in your um, bank statements all the time, you can select new rule, paste the description in, and then here it says allocate a bank transaction to an account if the description has a specific text. And then at this point, you can select which nominal code to put it to, what VAT rate should be applied, and should it be applied to both debits and credits, or just debits or just credits. Uh, so I've actually already created a rule for this, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Um, but if we click run rules, it then goes through and puts the transactions in the correct codes and the correct VAT rates. And then at this point, you can select reconcile. Uh, so that is it for the bank reconciliation process. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you do have any questions for us at all, then get in touch anytime. Uh, I will share the support team's contact details at the end, but you can visit our website as well. Um, not, most of these sort of issues, your accountant or bookkeeper will definitely be able to help you with. Okay, so um, that is the banking section. If you are VAT registered, I'm not going to touch on it too much today because it is a whole another subject in itself, but we are um, MTD ready for VAT. So you can submit VAT returns directly from the MISMA. It will process all of the uh, data that you've book kept. So your sales invoices, your supplier bills, your bank transactions. It will pull it all into a VAT return and allow you to submit it directly to HMRC. Uh, and then we've got our reports. So within reports, the most common ones you'll be using are your profit and loss, your balance sheet on the left side here, and then your debtors report and your creditors report. Now, I mentioned earlier about departmental reporting. Um, if you are using that, you can select more and you'll have this profit and loss by departments. And we're planning to add more and more reports to this as well based on user feedback. However, if we drill down into the profit and loss report, um, I, the, sorry, the reason why the profit and loss and the balance sheet reports are so important um, is that, and, and I recommend anyone in business should learn the difference between the two and how they work. Um, a good idea of your business uh, in a certain period and uh, from incorporation to date. So your profit and loss gives you an idea of your business performance in a certain period and your balance sheet shows you um, your performance from in, uh, incorporation to date. Okay, uh, so this profit and loss you can see here, uh, this shows you all of your sales, your expenses, how much tax you've paid in that period, and then it will give you a good idea of, of how much profit you've made. Uh, but it's quite flexible. And as you can see here, we've got our turnover at the top, our direct cost of sales. So what is impact, what costs relate to the sales we've made? And then we've got our expenditure. So what costs have we incurred that do not directly relate to our sales, um, but they need to go through the company? Uh, so, so things like charitable donations, for example. Um, and then at this point, you can actually drill down into all of these numbers to see what they're made up of. So if I wanted to see what sundry expenses was, I can right click that and see that it's Rick's Pickles, um, £83,000. And going one step further, you can select the transaction number to see the transactional detail. Uh, but you can also select edit and, and edit that transaction if you wanted to, if you decided that it was incorrect. Um, but scrolling to the top, one really useful feature is the ability to select what date range you want to report on and then select what periods you would like to compare it to. Uh, so this gives you an idea of a, a monthly uh, profit and loss report. And one of the most common mistakes business owners make when they are doing their profit and loss reporting or they're thinking about their, their monthly profit and loss is, let's say you've got an insurance policy and you've book kept that insurance policy into your accounts. Now, do you book that in the month that you've processed it or do you split that over a set period of time? Now, 
the correct way of doing it would be to recognize the length of that insurance policy. So if it's 12 months, then you would bookkeep it and, and pay it into the bank. But then you would do something which is called a uh, prepayment and you would enter it into your prepayment code and then release it evenly over the space of 12 months because it's a 12 month policy. So you would see uh, one twelfth of the cost go into each individual month. And then that gives you a good idea of your actual profit and loss. And what an accountant or bookkeeper will do is do that for you, process those transactions via a journal, and they would highlight any of the other transactions that do that as well. But it's also really important to recognize your sales invoices and, and place them into correct period as well. So if you do make a sale in September, but you're doing the work in November, then that that work could still fall through. So if you raise a sales invoice in September, it's, but you haven't been paid yet, it's going to look like it's a really good month. Um, but the reality is you could raise it in September, get to November, they cancel, and then you have to credit note that invoice in September. So this is where your profit and loss is really useful, but so is a cash flow forecast um, because your cash flow forecast will show you actually how much money is coming into the business um, rather than what invoices we've raised with no money coming in. Um, so these are the types of conversations you can have with your advisor or, or your, your bookkeeper or your accountant um, to really get on top of your business and see exactly how it's operating rather than just going in blindly. Uh, yeah, so again, you can drill down into each of these numbers to see what they're made up of and you can edit them and, and things like that. Uh, but moving on then to the balance sheet. So here, this is where our assets are, our liabilities are, um, and then our equity is as well. So what I mean by assets is anything you've purchased in the company that is going to be in the company for longer than a year. Um, and you, you wouldn't put that through the profit and loss. You would put that onto your balance sheet because it's an asset that you could resell at some point in the future. Um, it's also things like who owes you money. So your, your customers uh, called trade debtors. You've got other debtors your cash at hand and in bank. So that is an asset because that's money in the bank. Um, you've got your trade creditors. So um, who you owe money to still. Um, and then other creditors. So that could be employees' wages that haven't been paid yet. Um, pension schemes where you need to make contributions. So, so really what I'm trying to say is profit and loss is the result, whereas... Uh, balance sheet is just what your uh, the state of your company now. So who do you owe money to? Who owes you money? Uh, what assets do you have in the company that you could sell? How much money is in the company? And as a result of all of that, you can you can get an idea of how your business has performed. Um, but you can really manage your business through the balance sheet as well if you are on top of it and you're working with your accountant or bookkeeper to um, go through this on a monthly basis uh, because you can chase your debtors, you can chase the money that needs to come in and you can manage your creditors more effectively by negotiating uh, more favorable payment terms or asking them for an extra 30 days to make payment because you're waiting for a customer to pay you. Um, if you are tight on cash flow, then these are the sort of things that you can do to get on top of your business and make sure that it is viable to continue operating or should you just throw it in or do something else or start again or get an employment. But you, you, you don't want to just be operating and throwing money away, of course, if that is your end goal, unless you're, you're a charity and you're happy to do that. <laughs> um, but that's the balance sheet. And then going back to reports as well, we've got our debtors report and creditors report, which we covered earlier within the sales and expenditure section. OK, so we do also do payroll, which we're not going to cover today. Um, your accountant and bookkeeper can help you with final accounts and self-assessments. Uh, again, we're not going to cover that today. And then the next part we've got is settings. So this is where you can go to, to set up your numismar account. So you can enter all of your business details. 
uh, which will appear on your invoices and anything else you raise and send out from the system. You can upload your company logo, which will appear on your sales invoice. And then on the right hand side, you can enter your address, your trading address um, and your HMRC details if you are submitting VAT returns. Uh, you've got your VAT section where you can mark the company as VAT registered and then you can begin submitting the VAT returns. Uh, you don't need to worry about that if you're not VAT registered. Uh, and then we've got our directors. Now, Namisma can support sole traders, partnerships, LLPs, but this scenario that I'm in at the moment is actually a limited company. So if you are another type of company, don't worry, you, you can use the MISMA, it will have a different setting section, which is very similar to this. Uh, but here, for any limited companies, you can keep track of all of the directors in the company, update their shareholding, but you can also add any shareholders you have that aren't directors. Uh, within the email section, you can enter all of your SMTP details in order to send email from the MISMA. And uh, if you're not sure how to get this, you can select help me and it will guide you through exactly how to do that. Uh, but also you can just Google um, your email provider followed by SMTP details, and you should be able to find it really, really quickly. If not, get in touch with your advisor or speak to us and we can help you get that set up. Uh, and then we've got templates. So here, this is where you'd be able to uh, edit all of your invoice templates and uh, your emails that get sent out from Numisma. So invoice link email template, for example, we can select edit and it will show us the email template here. Now, from this point, you can edit all of this content. We do have a tagging system. I'm just gonna open a new window. At the bottom here, we've got a tagging system where you can pull through these tags in order to populate uh, information in the email. So that will mean that every email you send from the system will be completely customized based on the customer or the supplier you're sending it to. Uh, and in addition to that, we do also have, let me just pull through my signature. So if I pull through this, I've got my signature here and you can paste that in from your own email or wherever your signature is. Okay, so moving on, we, uh, sorry, going back to the template section, we do also have e invoice email templates, our recurring invoice email template, customer statements uh, as well. Uh, the payment section, so we actually integrate with two payment providers. We've got GoCardless as one and TrueLayer as the other. Uh, with GoCardless, we've actually made it so that you can take one-off payments from GoCardless, and it will include a pay by GoCardless button on the emails you send, as well as the pay now button on the PDF invoice itself. And the benefit of that is the first time you send an invoice to your customer, they can click pay now and set up a mandate with you. So if they don't already have a direct debit mandate in place, it will be set up, but then it will also take the one-off payment from them. So if you raise a sales invoice for £10,000, it will process that payment for £10,000. It won't set up a recurring mandate, but then every time you send the invoices, all that customer will have to do is click pay now and it will process the payment from them. Uh, with TrueLayer, we covered it. It's the existing pay now button where your, your customer can select which bank account they would like to pay from. Okay. And then we've got documents, so you can upload any useful files here. We are planning to develop this further and make it even more useful. Um, but if you want to upload any contracts or any other um, useful files that you think should be stored in the MISMA, and you can share these with your accountant and bookkeeper as well, then you can store it here. So if you wanted the GDPR compliant portal, you can, instead of sending everything via email, you can just upload it to the MISMA, send your advisor an email saying, I've uploaded it to the MISMA. Um, and, and they'll be able to get it. Uh, you've got your accounting periods. So these should match to your accounting periods um, on company's house, if you're a limited company, but for sole traders, uh, your most common uh, accounting period will be the 1st of April to the 31st of March of each year, uh, in line with the tax year. 
Uh, we've got our sales invoice information. So these are your default terms. So you can select your default payment term, uh, the default number of days each invoice should be due in. Uh, if you are not CIS registered, you don't need to worry about that, but you can select your default CIS rate if you are in the construction industry scheme. That's only applicable to people in the construction industry. Um, and then we've got invoice discounts. So you can enable that if you want to display a discount on your invoice. Uh, invoice retentions. You can enable multi-currency and enable the other deduction as well. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you can change your invoice number format. Uh, you can decide whether or not the automatic invoice numbering should be applied. You can turn it off if you want to. And you can also add a default note to all of your sales invoices. So really useful one for that. Um, number one use case, I think, is if you are using a factoring company and the factoring company need to collect the debt, you can add a note here and entering the default factoring um, details and, and bank details that they need to pay to. Um, so that, that is really quite useful. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is switch to the mobile apps. And before I do, um, the mobile app is available on both uh, Android and the Apple App Store. And you can find it by just, you should be able to Google Namisma, um, or let's go Namisma Bookkeeping app, app, Google Play. Let's have a look at Google Play. Um, so here you should be able to find this on your phone. You can download it and you'll see exactly what it looks like here. So I'm just gonna try and switch to that on Zoom. So bear with me because mobile phone is always a little bit more tricky. Okay, so share screen, let's try this. Perfect. So now, on screen, I apologize if there's any delays on this because it seems the mobile phone is a little bit behind in comparison to what I'm talking about. Um, however, on screen, you can see this is Barney's Bolorama. It's exactly the same company that I was just looking at, uh, but it just makes it so that you can manage your business on the go. Um, you've got your overdue invoices at the top, uh, followed by invoices due within 30 days, after 30 days. Uh, you've got the same for purchases. So overdue bills, who you need to pay, uh, and then you've got your banking section. Um, and each of these you can drill down into. So if I wanted to see my overdue invoices, I can select them and it will take me to the sales page. Oh, I think, bear with me, I just may need to log in. Let me just log out. Okay, so. There you go. So I'm back in. Uh, so on screen, you can see the company that I want to go into, which is Barney's Balarama. And the data is now refreshed. So we've got the 10 million. Uh, and if we drill down onto that, we can see a breakdown of all of the invoices. And from this point, you can actually see the due date and we can drill down onto that invoice to then download the PDF or we can select email and email it directly to the customer. So I'm gonna email that and the to email is already populated and I can actually select the plus button to add another email address. Um, I can enter a subject and a message. Hi, please make payment. Now, the invoice will automatically be attached to the email because I selected uh, a specific invoice, but you can also add additional attachments. Uh, and this email uh, will actually use your SMTB details that were rented into the MISMA. Um, so it's really easy just to send an email from here. 
Okay. Uh, and then going back to the dashboard, we've got our banking section. So you can select which bank account you'd like to look at. You can add a new bank account as well. Um, and, and very soon we're bringing bank feeds to the mobile app so that you can set a bank feed up from here. But we don't have that just at this moment in time. Now in the top right hand corner, uh, the main feature that we have, and you, you can actually select the camera icon in order to take a picture. So here we can select the camera or the gallery. So I'm gonna go for a camera. Oh, I turned focus mode on on my computer so I can't do that. Uh, bear with me, let me turn that off. Okay, so try that again, take picture, camera, there you go. So we can select the front camera and then take a picture of a receipt then press OK. And that has now uploaded successfully to my Namisma account. So I'll show you that just after um, the demonstration on the mobile phone. Um, but also, once it loads through, it will just take a minute. Uh, but you can select your view pending receipts in order to see that. Uh, in addition to being able to take pictures of receipts, you've also got uh, the ability to add an invoice, enter a supplier bill, uh, add mileage claims, allowances, new customers, and new suppliers. So let's start with an invoice. Um, you'd be able to select your invoice number. It is automatically populated with the next sequential number. Uh, you can select your customer, the bank account you'd like to be paid into, uh, the date that you're raising the invoice, and the due date that the invoice is, is due by. And then you can add new items to this invoice, which is all instantly synchronized with the mobile, uh, sorry, the web application. Yeah, so everything that's in the web application is on the mobile app and vice versa. Okay, so that one has CIS on it. So at this point, you can then save and send, or you can click save. Uh, what I'll do is save and send. And then it will take me to the email page where it will attach that invoice that I've just created and send it directly to the customer. Okay. So that saves a lot of time because you could be out at a person's uh, office or you, you could be on the job and you can raise an invoice there and then and send it directly to them. Um, and it's just really making your business mobile. You can also do the same with supplier bills or mileage claims. So if you're going to that job, you could get out the car and even enter your mileage claim. Um, it all depends on the processes that you would like to do, but you can select who the mileage claims for, the date that the journey took place, uh, enter a description. So you can say from home to TN54 for HJ, the transport method, so you can select cars and vans, and then how much mileage you did. And then it will calculate your claim of £56.25, and you can save that, and it will send it to Namisma and store it in the web application. Okay, so in addition to that, um, you've got your customers, so you can enter all of your customer details, including email and phone number, and your suppliers. And then you've got your company details in the top right hand corner so you can enter and update all of the um, details that I previously showed you on settings, including company logo, um, business name, trading name, email address, phone number, website, etc. Um, but you've also got your email settings. So you instead of logging into the web application, you can just log into the mobile app and set the settings up. You can also change your password and log out from here. Um, but going back to sales, so uh, that's the dashboard. You've got download an email. You've also got this on your purchases dashboard. So you can email um, this directly to suppliers or, or other individuals if you wanted to. So you can just type in an email address there or select the plus to select the supplier's email address. Um, and also we've got our contacts. So customers, suppliers, and you can edit the contacts details um, to really just manage your customers and suppliers 
uh, on your mobile, on the go. So this really acts as functionality, um, which you could class as customer relationship management. Um, but you can select the mobile uh, icon and it will call them and the email icons are just, just send them an email. Okay. So that is it for the mobile app. I will just show you the pending receipts. So here's the picture of the receipt I took earlier. Um, and now I'll just stop sharing on mobile and switch back to the web application. So let me open Zoom, share screen. Okay, great. So we're back into uh, Barney's Balarama. And if we go to the dashboard, I, I will just show you here, the sales invoice that I just raised on the mobile has been generated here and I can see it on screen. So we can preview that and see it in the, in the system. We've got the VAT there, the CIS. Etc. And then if we go to the dashboard, we've got our pending receipt. So this is the receipt that was uploaded from the mobile application. So I can see it was uploaded today, it's the 20th of Feb, uh, about five minutes ago. Um, you, what you can do, you can do this, or your accountant or bookkeeper can do this for you, and they can add that transaction. And then on the right hand side, the image of the receipt will appear. And on the left hand side, you can select the date and the amount that that receipt is for. OK, so at this point, you can it's, it's essentially a search functionality to see what's already been book kept in the system. I can see there's two transactions that have been book kept already. I know this is already a duplicate, but this is a duplication check to make sure you're not um, bookkeeping the same item more than once. So what you can do is download that receipt, view it on screen to make sure it's not uh, a duplicate. I can see this is a duplicate. However, just for demonstration purposes, if there was no receipt uploaded, you could select upload and it will upload this file. It will also replace the old file with the new file, or you can send a query. So uh, if you have a purchase ledger, department or someone that's working in your business that deals with this, they can send you a query just asking what the receipt relates to. And um, your accountant or bookkeeper can also use this as well. And that again is boosting the ability to liaise um, between you and your advisor. Uh, and then you can go ahead and add the new receipt manually. So then you'd be able to select the supplier, enter a bill number. So let's go transaction 724. Uh, date, and then we can enter an expense type. So let's go travel, uh, fuel, £10.95, and then the VAT rate as standard rate. And then once saving that, we can then go to expenditure and search for MFG. Uh, it is in the 2021 uh, year. So I need to go back to the previous year. And then I can see that that transaction has been book kept. So transaction 724. Uh, then I can also view the receipt from this page as well. So that's one of the beauties of using the mobile app and going through that full process because it will match all of the receipts to all of the transactions. Um, you can quickly identify what transactions have receipts uploaded to them versus what ones haven't. Because on the right hand side, the ones that haven't have an eye icon, the ones that have have a PDF icon. Um, but that's it for today's session. I hope you found this useful. If you would like to get up and running on the MISMA and you, you haven't got an account yet, then I highly advise you speaking to your accountant or bookkeeper. Or if you haven't got an accountant or bookkeeper that uses Namisma, then you can visit namisma.co.uk and come to who we work with and business owners, and you can select a free trial. And then just make sure you select the business type other non-accountancy, and it will set you up with a free account on Namisma so that you can start testing it out and seeing exactly how it works. Um, but we highly recommend you that if you're not in the accounting world or if you don't know about accounting and bookkeeping then do work with an accountant or bookkeeper on uh, namisma to really help you get insights into your business um 
And if you haven't got one, but you would like to find one, then do visit our find an advisor section uh, because we've got many advisors on the, using the MISM already up and down the country. And chances are there may be one in your area. Um, not all of our advisors are listed, so there, there may be a lot more um, on this map, but you can quickly select one um, to see who you could potentially partner with and, and visit their profile and submit an inquiry. Um, so here they've got a little bit about them and then you can contact them. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, so that's it for today's session. Any questions or queries, feel free to visit our website or get in touch with our support team on support at namisma.co.uk or give us a call on 020 3021 2326. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it and I hope to speak to you soon. Thank you. Bye.